it hot in here or is it just me? Turn to your neighbor and say, you're so hot. That's weird. Don't say that. <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready to learn something new from God's word tonight? Listen, help me out. Night number one, we talked about a little thing called re... You guys are on it. Last night, we talked about a little mode called co-op mode, where two are better than, but three is better. Are you guys going to go home and try that whole pulling thing with the yarn? You should. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So if you are going to take notes tonight, pull out those notebooks and pull out those pens. A lot of you guys all around have been showing me how many notes you've been taking. Some of your church leaders have been telling me how many notes you've been taking, and it is adding to your point secretly. So make sure you are taking notes. If you got your Bibles, hold on to them. But if you are not holding on to a notebook, a pen, or a Bible, put it in your pocket or shove it under your chair. That way no one is distracted this evening as we get going. Say, okay, PC. All right, let's do this thing. Okay, so here's a question I gotta ask you. When you're playing your games, when you're playing your devices, how many of you guys hate it when you see this flashing icon right here? Let me hear you scream. Okay, okay, okay. But typically you're not screaming, yay! Typically you would scream. I mean, seriously, think about it. You're playing your game. You're beating the boss. You're winning the race. Your team is co-oping. They're working together. You're about to achieve victory. And you were so busy, you didn't see this flashing sign. And if your console or device goes out, you have to start. And that's when you do a long, drawn-out no. Ready? One, two, three, go. Hey, that sounded really good. Let's see if you can do it really fast. Go. Perfect, let's try to go really slow. Okay, you guys are doing great. Hey, tonight if you're taking notes, if you are ever in that situation where you see that flashing icon, what should you do to your device? Charge it, you're so right. So tonight's title of my message is called Recharge. Someone say recharge. Recharge, we know that means to plug in your device, right? Well, I'm sure if I ask you, what is the definition of recharge, you could tell me. But here at Camp Wow, here's our definition of what recharge is. It's pretty simple. It's something that is pretty similar to probably what you would say. And we're going to throw it on the screen for you. And it says to restore power to something that has been drained by connecting it to a much greater power source. A much greater power source. I'm going to read that again because you guys got to think about this. When your device is low on battery and you need to recharge it, you have to restore the power to something that has been drained by connecting it to a much, say it with me, greater power source. That's right. Hey, our lives actually need to be recharged. Did you know that? So help me out with this. You got to listen to your body. So when your body is, and your stomach is making really, really, really weird noises, you need to recharge your body by eating some, you're with me. If your lips start getting chapped because you've been playing in the sun all day long and your throat is getting really, really weird and you need to get something in your body, it starts with a W, it is water. I hope you guys are drinking lots of water. And if you're partying in the party barn all night long and you're partying till you drop because you just can't stop and you're so sleepy and you're falling asleep in service and your leaders are doing this, that just means that you need to recharge your body by getting some. Did anybody not sleep last night? <laughs> some of y'all are like, yeah, that was me, that was me. And all the church leaders are like, I got my eye on you tonight. Because you need your sleep, okay? Did you know? Someone say, did you know? Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, did you know? Did you know that even Jesus had to recharge? What? Jesus? The Son of God had to recharge? I'm going to show it to you, okay? I've got three. Someone say three. Someone say tres. That's three in Spanish, okay? So I've got three stories in the Bible where it shows that Jesus had to recharge. Now, Jesus was fully God, but yet still fully man. 
That means that he was God in human flesh. And his human flesh, if his tummy started growling, that means he needed to eat some. If his lips started to get dry and his throat was really parched, it needed to drink some more. And if he stayed up all night with his disciples and they were fishing and having fun and walking on waves, then he needed to get some. Okay. But, someone say but. If you eat food to recharge your battery for your stomach, and if you drink water to recharge your lips and your throat for hydration, and if you recharge your body that's really tired and needs some sleep, how do you recharge your faith? How do you recharge your faith? So, I hope you're taking notes, and I hope you're listening, so pull out that earwax out of your ear, and then wipe it on your neighbor one more time. Say, that's for you, save it for later. That is so nasty. All right, everyone say shh. Everyone, one more time, everyone say shh. Because you don't wanna miss this. I have three stories in the Bible I'm gonna breeze through with you really quick and then I'm gonna show you something that's really cool. The first one, I'm not gonna read the scripture just yet, but in Matthew chapter 14, we read of Jesus' cousin. His name was John the... A lot of you guys know that, John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist got uh, arrested, and he's being held in prison, and as a matter of fact, he dies there. They end up cutting his head off. Someone say, oh my gosh. So Jesus lost a cousin. How do you think that made him feel? Sad, absolutely. And even though Jesus wanted to be alone for a little bit, because how many of you guys wanna be alone when you're sad? Even though Jesus wanted to be alone for a little bit, in this story, in Matthew 14, it talks about how Jesus still fed over 5,000 people with just a little bit of bread and some fish. You guys know that story? So if Jesus wanted to be alone because he's really, really sad, but instead he spends all day in the hot sun with over 5,000 people doing a miracle, feeding all of them, do you think his battery is drained? A hundred percent. So how do you think he felt after doing all of this? Pretty tired? Pretty worn out? Pretty sad? He still wanted to be alone, right? Let's pick this up. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. Let's see how Jesus recharged his faith battery. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to what? When evening came, he was there alone. I hope you guys underline that in your Bibles or write that little part down. Jesus himself went alone up to a mountain to be by himself to do what? Grab that really quick out of the air and put it in your pocket. Let's go to another story. I'm not gonna read it just yet, but in Mark chapter one, we read a story where Jesus is doing what Jesus does best. He's healing people. He's teaching people about the love of God. Jesus is actually in a temple, or for today's terminology, we'll say that Jesus was in a church, and he actually cast out a demon out of a guy, and people were amazed, but Jesus was getting tired. Someone say, he's getting tired. Well, after all of this, one of his disciples says, hey, my mother-in-law is sick with a really high fever, and back then, they didn't have doctors like they have today. They didn't have medicines like they have today, and so a really high fever could be deadly. Someone say, oh no. So what do you think Jesus did as soon as he heard about that? He stopped what he was doing and went over there and he healed her. Someone say, it's a miracle. miracle. But people all over that town heard that Jesus just came into that person's house and healed someone who was deadly sick. So guess what they did? They brought as many sick people as they could to Jesus, and what do you think Jesus did? Of course he did. He healed them. That's what Jesus does. So after all day of healing people, how do you think Jesus felt? Tired? Worn out? He's using his faith, believing that God is going to use him to do what God said he's going to do. So how do you think Jesus recharged his faith battery? Let me pick this up and... In Matthew, I'm sorry, in Mark chapter one, verse 35, this is what it says. The next morning, someone say the next morning. The next morning, Jesus woke up very early. Do we have early risers in the house? You wake up at like the butt crack of dawn, okay? It's crazy. So the next morning, 
Jesus woke up very early and he left the house while it was still dark and he went to a place, what? Where he could be alone and... That sounds really, really familiar. Didn't we just read something like this? Okay, grab that one and put it in your pocket. And here's the third one. It's really interesting. This one's in Matthew chapter 26. We're going back to Matthew. And we read a story that is pretty famous during Easter time. How many of you guys like Easter? Woo-woo! Listen, side note, as much as it's fun to hunt Easter eggs and eat as much candy as you want to, by the way, my favorite is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, in case you were wondering. Um, <laughs> as much fun as that is, uh, we actually, as believers, celebrate Easter because Jesus is no longer dead. He is alive. Someone say hallelujah. <laughs> so... This story picks up during the Easter time. Jesus just gets done eating his last supper with his best friends, his disciples. And it's evening time. And Jesus knows that tonight's the night he's gonna get arrested. He's gonna get falsely accused. He's gonna get beat up. People who don't like him are gonna call him names. They're gonna spit on him. They're gonna hurt him. And ultimately, Jesus knew that it was God's plan for Jesus to die on a cross for you and for me. So Jesus is in this garden called Gethsemane. Say Gethsemane. That's a really, really weird word. Say it again, Gethsemane. So here's Jesus and he gets into this garden with his friends and he tells them, I'm gonna go up a little bit more ahead to be alone and you guys are paying attention. I'm gonna go up to be alone and I'm gonna go pray. So this is what happened. We're gonna read this in Matthew chapter 26, verses 43 for 44. So Jesus goes up to pray. He comes back, his disciples are sleeping. He's like, what are y'all doing? Wake up, I need you to pray for me. Something's about to happen. He goes a second time. He prays, he comes back. His disciples are still sleeping. This is what happens. Again, he came and he found them sleeping and their eyes were heavy. How many guys, your eyes are heavy right now? And you're just like, I can't keep them awake. You know, wake yourself up, okay? So his, their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he, Jesus, went away and prayed for the third time. Three times is the charm, right? He had to recharge by prayer. So out of all of these different scenarios, how did Jesus recharge his faith battery? He went alone to... He went alone to pray. So here's the keynote. I want you to write this down. Prayer is how you recharge your faith battery. I'm gonna say it again. Prayer is how you recharge your faith battery. And here's a question I want you to think about, okay? So point to your brain and say, you gotta work just a little bit longer, baby. You gotta work just a little bit longer, okay? Here's something I want you to think about. If Jesus, The son of God, who was perfect in every single way. He never sinned. So if Jesus, the son of God, knew how important it was to get away and pray, to recharge his faith battery, then how much more important do you think it is for you and I to get away and pray? Think about it. Think about it. Jesus is perfect. Jesus can, you're healed. You're healed, you're here. Food for everybody. You know, Jesus could do all these miracles, but Jesus knew something very important. And he's teaching us something tonight, is that sometimes your faith battery gets low and you need to build it back up. And one of the best ways to do that is to get alone and what? Oh, y'all gotta say it like you believe it. You gotta get alone and what? You gotta get alone and pray. But Pastor Chris, I don't know how to pray. Oh, that's easy. Let me help you. In case you've never been taught how to pray, it's super easy. No, you don't have to do this. Nope, you don't have to do this. Nope, you don't have to do this. And nope, you don't have to do this. Okay? Why do we close our eyes and bow our heads? It's just to cut off distractions so you're not like, dear Lord, thank you so much. Oh, a butterfly. Okay, that's the only reason why we close our eyes and bow our heads. And if you wanna hold your hands, it's so that you don't pick your nose while you're praying, you know what I'm saying? Listen, it's just to cut off distractions. But how you pray is very simple. 
How many of you guys love to talk to your best friends? There you go. And as you're talking to your best friends, you're exchanging funny stories. You're doing all this fun stuff. Listen, listen. You talk to God the same way you talk to your best friend. That's it. You can talk to him out loud. God, I love you so much. Today was so cool. Thank you. It was awesome. Or you can pray to him really quietly. God, I love you so much. Today was just so cool. You're amazing. Hi, mom. Or you can pray to him quietly in your mind, in your heart. Because God can still hear your thoughts, okay? And God knows what's inside your heart. Someone say, God knows what's inside my heart. And God knows what's inside my thoughts. So listen, you've been around people all day long. You're tired, you're weary, you're, you're hungry or you're hangry. Anybody been hangry before? Okay, <laughs> it's so funny, y'all know what that means. Listen, yes, recharge your battery if you're hungry, eat some food. If you're thirsty, drink some water. If you're tired, get some. But listen, this is where it really counts, Camp Wow. When something bad happens in your life and you're asking yourself, if God is so good, then why do bad things happen to me? That's a big flashing icon that says your faith battery is low and you need to recharge. Maybe you're like Jesus was in our first example, and he was sad because someone in his family passed away and died, okay? And you're sad, and you're, you can even talk to God and be like, God, I don't understand. I am so angry right now. Why did my aunt have to die? And as you're talking to him, that's good. He wants to hear how you feel because he already knows. But when you know and you're thinking in your head or maybe you have friends whispering to you being like, oh, well, it, you know, all that church stuff and church camp and all this other stuff. If God's so good, then, you know, he wouldn't let bad stuff happen to you. God's not really good to you. He doesn't love you. And then you start thinking that way like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was God? Where, where was he? That's a big flashing icon that says, oh oh, I need to recharge my faith battery and be just like Jesus and I need to get alone and I need to. And how do you pray? You just simply talk to God. But here's the other thing about prayer. And I got a slide for it in case you wanna write it down. Prayer is simply talking to God, but it's also listening to God. So many times we pretend without really pretending that God is just a magical genie in a bottle. And when we want something, we will get alone and we'll get alone and pray. Thank you God so much. Hey, I really want an Xbox 360 and I want an Xbox One and I want a PS5 and I want this. Thank you so much, I love you. Let me tell you this. If you went to your best friend and every day you talk to them like that. Hey, you're my best friend, thank you so much. Hey, can I have what you just have? Can I have that? Thank you so much, I wanna play. Okay, great, I'll return it later. And you did that every single day do you think your best friend and you would have a good relationship? No, because they think you're taking advantage of them, right? Listen, we can't treat God like that. So when we talk to God, yes, it's okay to ask him for stuff, but maybe we need to take a moment and pause and be quiet and be still and say, hey God, what do you, what do you wanna talk to me about right now? What, what do you wanna tell me right now? Because God, right now, all I can think about is how angry I am. So-and-so called me names down the street and, and I just don't feel like I have any friends, but I know you love me and my faith battery is flashing and I really, really need some help. Maybe it's about time where you think, mm, I, I really need to recharge my faith battery. Can I show y'all something really quick? I'm gonna, oh my, gotta catch that. I'm gonna show you something really quick because this is really important. A visualization is always really, really good for you. I've got two clear containers here. And I've got all these types of different balls to play with up here in terms of ball pit balls. I've got dodge balls. Anybody got like playing dodgeball? I got, I got soccer balls up here. I got a lot. But this is something I want you to visualize really quick, okay? I want you guys to really, really attention to this. So many times in our lives, these big ones, are uh, gonna represent Jesus. And so many times in our lives, if we want Jesus in our life 
in order to completely cover it up and to completely say, God, I believe in you, I trust you no matter what. A lot of times we decide to go to anybody when things happen in our lives, we go to anybody but God. We go to our best friend, we go to our mom and dad, and hey, that's okay, go to your mom and dad, talk to people, talk to your friends. But we go to all these different people because we want some help. Because when you're going through a hard time, it's really, really hard when you can't see Jesus, when you can't hear Jesus. Listen, check this out. It's okay if I dropped one because this is still gonna work. If we go to our family, our friends, and everybody else, and we try to fix situations on our own without going to God first, we're gonna pretend that these big ones right here, this is God. Hey God, thank you so much. After I've already talked to my friends, my family, all this other stuff. Hey God, I feel sad. Thank you so much. Can I close this properly? Is it fitting? No, I mean, I could, I could probably sit on it, but I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> Last time I jumped on something when I was doing kids ministry, it was a chair and it broke, okay? I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so, so many times, we try to fill this up. We try to recharge our faith battery by talking to people first and putting God last. Think about it. We talk to people first and then we talk to God last. It's not really gonna work. So let's reverse this. Something major happens in your life. The first thing you do is do what Jesus did and you get alone and you what? Come on, you gotta say it like you mean it. You get alone and you what? <laughs> then, someone say then. Then, then go to mom and dad, go to a friend, go to a teacher, and it fits. And it fits. Same amount, but something's different. What's different? Who did I put first here? Who did I put first here? Other people, right? Listen, so many times in our lives, we put other people ahead of God. So many times we put other things ahead of God. There's nothing wrong with fam friends and family and things, but when our faith battery is flashing saying, you need to recharge, you need to pray, you need to get alone and be with God, a lot of times we talk to our friends about this before we talk to God about this. When in fact, you need to do the opposite. You need to talk to God first and then talk to your friends. If Jesus, the Son of God, knew how important it was to get alone and pray, how much more is it important that we do that? But there's something else you can charge your faith battery with. It's not just prayer, prayer is a big one. But here's two more. Some of y'all even said it when I asked this. Prayer is one way, worship is another way you can recharge your faith battery. And what's that other one? To read your Bible. So there are three major things you can do to recharge your faith battery. I want you to write them down if you got a notebook. One is prayer, because that's what Jesus modeled for us. Pray to God. Get alone and pray to God. The second one is what? Oh, uh, say it like you mean it. The second one is what? Worship. Singing to God. Did you know that even after their last supper, Jesus is sitting down with his best friends before they go to that garden and Jesus gets alone and prayed. Did you know the Bible even says that they sang to God? They did. Even Jesus modeled us singing to God when we're going through some tough times. Another way to recharge your faith battery. And then lastly is reading the Bible. Reading the Bible can be hard sometimes, right? It, it is. So ask your church leaders tonight, Hey, I have a Bible, but it's really hard to read. What do you recommend? Listen, if you're taking notes, even church leaders, this is a great one. It's hard to find, but it's really good. It's called the ICB, the International Children's Bible. It is so simple and so easy to read at an easy to read level. So the International Children's Bible, I highly recommend. I'm gonna wrap this up really quick, okay? So that we can worship God and we're gonna recharge our faith battery tonight together. All of you guys have been dancing and singing and playing and y'all are making so much great memories here, but this is where it really counts, where you're connecting with God right here in this room. So tonight, this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to bow your heads. And it's not because you're doing some supernatural thing to where you're praying now. What are we doing? We're cutting off distractions, right? We're cutting off distractions. This is something I want you to realize really quick is that Jesus knew how important it was to pray, especially that night when he was about to get arrested. 
beaten and crucified for you. Jesus modeled for us to pray. When you're going through a really hard time, pray, get alone and talk to God. Because here's the awesome thing. You might be thinking, but PC prayer doesn't work because I know the story. Jesus prayed and asked God, please help me not have to die on the cross, but, but not what I want to be done, let your will be done. And then he died on the cross. PC prayer, prayer doesn't work. Yes, it does, because read the story more. What happens? Jesus came back alive. So when you're going through battles, when you're going through struggles, the number one best thing for you to do is pray and worship God because while you're praying and as you're going through that hard time in your life, you're recharging your faith battery and while you're connected to the greater power source, he's fighting your battles for you. He's fighting your battles for you for you. You don't have to try to fix what's going wrong in your life. Let God fix what's going wrong in your life by putting him first. Put God first and get alone and talk to God. So Father, tonight as we get ready to worship you, God, help us to remember that when we're struggling with a battle, the way we fight Yes, we have the armor of God on. Yes, we can do things. But the way we fight, Father, is to get on our knees and pray, to cut off distractions and say, God, I need you. My faith battery level is so low. I don't know when, I don't know how this is gonna get better, but I'm trusting in you. And I know that while I'm going through this, you are fighting my battles for me. And God, I thank you tonight. You are recharging faith. God, where kids didn't even know they needed faith, tonight, Lord, energize and recharge their faith. And Lord, when they go home, when they go back to school and people are talking everything about but you, and they start to realize that that connection they had at camp with you is starting to slowly fade, Lord, they're having that flashing red icon that says you need to recharge your faith battery. Lord, help them to remember, I'm gonna get alone. I'm gonna get in my room. I'm gonna close the doors. So I'm gonna cut off distractions and I'm gonna pray to God. Lord, we love you so much in this place. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you guys stand to your feet as we worship God with this new song?